Hello, everybody. This is going to be a quick video on the warp span and ideal parallelism of divide and conquer algorithms. Um, and so if you recall, uh, the warp is just the total amount of work, like add up all the nodes in your graph or the total amount of work in your program, and that's the work. Uh, span is the amount of work on the path with the most work. That's why we sometimes call um, this the critical path and span the critical path length. Um, and that's also related to ideal parallelism um, is sort of bound by this sort of like the best you can possibly hope for is work divided by the span, which makes sense if you've got some path with a bunch of work on it, um, you're gonna have to wait around for that path to finish. And so it doesn't matter how many processors you have, um, or even if you have infinite processor, your ideal parallelism is always gonna be bound by this. Um, in this quick uh, computation graph, I've you know, sort of made a thousand work per task at the bottom. It divides down to eight. I tack down out an extra one bit of work uh, to the different ones. It doesn't matter which path I go through. Um, you know, like the sort of critical path length is going to be the same. It's you know, um, the sort of span is related to this thousand. You add up all the sort of work along the way, and you you can see we're approaching seven point five one. Now, obviously, if they're all the same, a thousand, you can pick all of them or the critical. Each one was the same is the critical path length. Doesn't really matter, but I just tacked an extra one on so you could see. Doesn't matter which path I go, if I tack one on, uh, it's sort of the same performance. Um, if I were to make this uh, only have one work per uh, task and I tacked an extra one on here, what you can see is I'm, I'm sort of, my parallelism is much worse, right? Um, as opposed to like, cause like the amount of work per task is getting dominated by um, this divide and conquer algorithm, right? The amount of work just, excuse me, not the divide and conquer, the amount of work just doing fork and join is sort of, dominating things. We're dropping all the way to 2.44, which still seems pretty good, right? It seems better than nothing, but actually it's actually worse than sequential, right? Um, and trust me, this might look like uh, I'm not doing divide and conquer anymore. Uh, I'm totally doing divide and conquer. It's just because, um, you know, uh, it's trust me, it's going, you know, if you look at this, it's sort of like doing the divide and conquer algorithm, but I'm not forking and joining. So I ended up with a sequential strand as my computation graph. Um, but the work and span in this one are both 24. So my parallelism is one. That makes sense because I'm like, I'm not doing anything in parallel. Um, but the amount of work, uh, the, the work and span are so low in this one, it's actually lower than this uh, parallel one that's got a you know 2.44 parallelism. And that's because we've taken out all the overhead of fork and join, which um, wasn't really helping us because uh, we had so little work to do at this these leaves and the uh, real thing. So. Um, it's just a quick example of why if you don't have enough work uh, to do um, down here at the bottom when you get all the way there, uh, sometimes you can actually make uh, your parallel algorithm run slower than your sequential.